Hello, and welcome to Work Well with Stephanie Wolf, brought to you by the Whole Food Health Coach LLC, where we make your goals our goals, and you're never alone on your wellness journey. Experience the information, inspiration, and collaboration of our coach in your corner partnership. My name is Stephanie Wolf. I am a national board certified health and wellness coach and the proud owner of the Whole Food Health Coach, now in its ninth year and five time winner of the Best of Gwinnett Award in Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism Practices. Rachel, Sherry, and I invite you to visit WholeFoodHealthCoach.com to set up your 60-minute healthy living assessment. Our award-winning three-phase program is changing lives. Work Well is brought to you weekly and is dedicated to your personal and professional health and wellness. I offer examples from my own life, health, marriage, family, and business. I share my research, my opinions, and my faith, designed to bring you compelling content, engaging challenges and practical body, soul, and spirit support on your wellness journey. WorkWell comes to you from my personal desire to live long and strong with passion and purpose, die of old age, and help others to do the same. So now, from living rooms to boardrooms via Business Radio X, you're listening to Work Well with Stephanie Wolf. Awesome. Let's do this. I've got a funny for you to start this podcast with, and it's called The Best Babysitter. My wife and I had the best babysitter. She would wash, dry, and put away the dishes, clean the house, even help with the laundry after putting our kids to bed. Once we were getting ready to go out for the evening and my wife was embarrassed because she had let the dirty laundry pile up. So before we left, she threw all of it, the dirty clothes, into the dryer so the babysitter wouldn't see it. You can imagine our surprise when we returned to find all of our dirty clothes folded neatly in the laundry room. (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right. Well, maybe not that funny, but it seemed funny to me. I have stored my dirty laundry different places. And since today we're talking again about spring cleaning, I decided that would be a good one. So if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that every week I seek to offer you inspiration and information, just like I just said. But I want you to challenge yourself, change something, improve something, let go of something, pick up something, start something, restart something, or at least begin a healthy self-dialogue or a dialogue with your health coach to help you to move forward. Where do you want to go? Let's get there. And uh, in January, we talked about new beginnings. And February, heart health. In March, we did a lot on marriage, talking about the marvelous marriage marathon with my husband, Jack. And then this month, we've been devoting most of our time, or all of our time, actually, to spring clean communities using the CLEAN acronym. And next month, just to give you a little taste of what's coming, in May, we're going to be talking women's health. And in June, we're going to talk men's health. So exciting things are coming. I hope you are listening to this podcast and getting a whole lot from it. I love hearing from my listeners. So please reach out anytime you can. So the solutions for a clean community is what we're all about today. Out with the old and in with the new. And I'm going to let my favorite band, Carlton, really get us going today with the song Made for This. Silence the doubters. I love that. And you'll see how that fits into our podcast for the day and our topic for the day. Spring cleaning for this month. Our focus has been living and supporting our own clean world and clean community and how um, all the things that we do actually affects our family and our uh, community as well. So physical, emotional, and mental spring cleaning. Out with the old and with the new. Cleaning up the whole place very well. And really looking at some of those parts that maybe you don't clean that often. Tidying up, freshening up the living space or your life. And really bringing in the new season. It's going to roll in whether you're ready for it or not. So um, making it a new season and just enjoying that concept of clean. So I created the Clean Concepts for Healthy Living as a foundation for all of the coaching and training that we offer at Whole Food Health Coach. Character, the core values, lifestyle, exercise, attitude 
attitude and nutrition. They're all the foundations for our healthy, well-balanced life, and they're woven throughout every workshop or wellness seminar or podcast um, and private session that we offer. So we began our spring cleaning talking to a licensed professional counselor, working with young people in our school system and their parents as well. And we were all challenged to take a serious look at ourselves and the examples that we're setting and do some clean up in our own lives, refresh our outlook, remove uh, the accumulated garbage, replace some of the bad attitudes, and basically just stop settling or at least stop giving less than our best. So your um, strength and stability can be what someone else needs and what someone else can lean on. Lean on me and our coaching team. It doesn't matter whether I'm talking to a big corporation or a small group or a married couple or entire family of four generations like I did up in North Georgia, um, or if it comes down to the individual, really you and me. So whether you're a CEO of a big company or a parent um, and trying to be a good example or just trying to live well yourself. So that's who I'm talking to today. And we've actually um, been talking a lot about how to live a more balanced life ourselves and some of the tips and tricks that we've given you. And you've heard me say a clearly defined problem is half the solution. So there's really never one solution and uh, that, that there's that one thing that we need to find. That's not the case at all. In fact, I find that most of us, no matter what our age or um, job status or financial status, finding a solution to a perceived problem is difficult because sometimes we don't really know what the problem is. And at any given time, it changes. So sometimes there are no words to describe what we're feeling or what we're experiencing or how we're handling something. And if someone doesn't take time to ask us, we're probably not going to dig any deeper into it and just gloss it over and move on. And a lot of times we also treat the symptoms. So as a society, we like to get rid of pain and medicate it legally or illegally. And um, a lot of times we end up just treating that symptom and never really getting to the root cause of anything. So the treatments sometimes don't address the whole person is another issue that we find, at least in my world, and um, we often rather escape than to address, um, sometimes ignoring it or, or escaping it either. And then we also don't un address, like I said, the underlying condition and get to the real problem so that we can get some self-care and begin moving in the direction that we want to move in for success and health and that balance that I've been talking about. So a lot of times we focus too much on the problem and not enough on the solutions. And that's why today um, the clean um, acronym is going to be about solutions and solution-based action toward that future movement, that fo that forward movement and momentum that you're looking for. I was made for this. I love that song because it really, I turn that on when I'm getting ready to work out in my workout room and I just need a little extra motivation. And they have plenty of other um, songs that are um, very motivating as well. So check them out. And then I think another thing is that we allow our past to dictate too much of our future. We can't do anything about what's already been done, um, but we can do something about what we do now and next. So if you are or have been one of my clients, you hear a lot about now and next. We can't go back, but what are you going to do now and what's next? And maybe making a few steps forward is all we need to change our mindset. So after a lot of years of experience, actually living on all sides of these topics, um, my own ups and downs, neglected self-care, focus on problems and lo losing sight of my own future because of my past failures, but I don't live there anymore. Say that to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I don't live in the past anymore. It's all about now and next. Today and my future. That's what I'm going to keep my eyes on, and I hope you will as well. I'm going to use an example from my own life because I uh, am a proud motor 
motorcycle uh, endorsed driver. And so I have a motorcycle endorsement. My husband and I had matching soft tail classic Harley Davidsons for years and we traveled all over the country. Super stories from that. But when I was um, first learning to ride a motorcycle, I took a motorcycle class to get that endorsement. And there were two principles. There were a lot of things I learned, but two principles that I learned that I think those words still ring in my ears. Number one was keep your eyes on where you want to go and your body and your bike will take you there. Your body and the bike become one. Same with me and my horse, uh, Hope, who is a registered quarter horse, Palomino mare, trail horse, awesome. We were one. And uh, so I'm looking well ahead and uh, keeping my eyes on the road where I want to go and you will, your body will take you there, the body and the bike. And uh, again, the second thing was looking well ahead. Another powerful phrase was look down, go down. So if I'm looking at the pavement, I may end up seeing it close up, up close and person, personal. So looking forward and keeping my eyes on where I want to go. And sometimes all we need, I need the same thing you need, compassion, inspiration, information, application, sometimes some accountability obviously, but a supportive partnership in moving forward. And not only that, but we really need to uh, celebrate a little more. So adding celebration to that, learning how to celebrate our victories and not pick them apart, actually enjoying and rewarding ourselves for what we've gotten done. A lot of times in my life, I've got a whole list of things to do and I'm always working on some new things. So everything is kind of in the middle of uh, the stage, you know, of completion. And I don't mind that so much, except there's always that deadline that has to um, be achieved. So rewarding myself at the end of a day is something that I just have started doing, you know, really about two years ago after writing Smarter Start for Coaches. And one of the things I encourage them to do is at the end of the day, just tell yourself, well done, good job. You know, you made yourself proud today. So um, reward yourself for a job well done or a trial that you overcome or a challenge that you tackled or a sale that you made or a client you helped or even a lesson that you learned. Because even when things don't go well, we can learn something from what we have um, achieved or even not achieved and learning from it is key to growing. And that's a growth mindset. So I'm very proud of the emerging success of not just my coaching practice, but of our coaching profession. And I get really excited for every opportunity I have to help um, gain access to the tools needed uh, for a productive health and wellness journey when my clients come to me. They usually have something that they're presenting with, something that there is a, a real need and um, that they see right now that needs to be addressed. But I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm going to look a little farther into their life and make sure that what we need is to look at the whole person and deal with the whole journey ahead. So it's kind of a continual journey. It's not one that you know has a beginning and an end. Um, it's a lifelong journey. And those tools and techniques um, for the days and the nights, the ups and the downs and the backups again. So someone being there to remind us that it's less about what we do or don't do and more about who we are and who we're becoming. So I love to talk about who do you want to become? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to be in your life as an individual? And it's not necessarily goals about your job or status, you know, success or any of those things. It's the kind of person that you want to be known for and who you want to become. So as a mental health first aider, and one who's studied extensively in the world of positive psychology, I assess the needs of my clients and advocate for them, advocate for their mental health um, of an individual and support them as together we find help that they may need if it's outside of my scope of practice. And thank goodness I have some great resources. But many people don't need a professional therapist. They may need an empathetic, um, non-judgmental, forward-focused listener. So a listener 
is more valuable than a talker. And I know this is a podcast and I'm doing all the talking and hopefully you're doing all the listening and note taking. But um, but I'm also a listener face to face with people. I enjoy relationship and I enjoy asking deeper um, questions, probing questions, things that I think will make a difference in a person's life because it's not just about what's being said at the moment. It's sometimes it's about what's next and who you are and how you got where you are. Yeah, we have to discuss a little bit of that. But I'm much more focused on where we want to go from here. It's a powerful principle when you start feeling um, like someone actually cares and is asking questions and a deeper dive and that they really want to know what's going on and they're willing to hear you out. So I do all that's in my power during a session with, especially with young people, because we've been talking about that a lot. And my goal is to bring a peaceful and calm, caring, positive impact to your cauldron of chaos, whatever that might be. I actually had a part of my program years ago called Organized Chaos. I can't eliminate your chaos, but I can, um, or I can't um, eliminate your chaos, yeah, but I can help you organize it. So that's some of what I do is organizing that chaos because it helps us to feel a little bit more in control. And um, when someone's listening, they know I appreciate them and um, what they're facing today and every day and just being there for them and you. Um, Just a member on your care team to see you through the challenging situation um, with some assurance and some support as you make it to the other side. That's what I'm all about, helping you to get through this particular obstacle. And obviously, as you're continuing to run or continuing on the road with your eyes ahead, there are going to be other obstacles. But I'm going to try to give you as many tools along the way and um, so that you can gain some coping skills and maybe learning from those highs and the lows of life and the ups and downs that I mentioned of emotions, and all the while to build that productive growth mindset. So over my nine years in full-time practice as a master coach, I've been called on often by parents who reach out to me for their teen's wealth or um, health issues. I've mentioned stomach issues or big concern, um, skin problems, those kind of things, but even more so for their teens, uh, low self-esteem or anxiety issues, sleep issues, sadness, and of course, depression. So much of which stems directly from their input. And remember input, the CLEAN acronym, CLEAN Concepts to the Rescue again. Remember, we're talking about solutions, and I'm going to give you several of them that are right at Whole Food Health Coach. So one call away. These issues that um, parents come to me with, they actually go hand in hand. And much is due to treating only one area of health or another, but rarely treating the whole person, body soul, and spirit. So our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual life, and the great eight, and if you haven't heard the great eight, obviously you can listen back to one of our first podcasts um, from October 2022, where I go over that. But I've worked with so many precious young people over the years, individually in private coaching sessions, and my heart breaks as I listen to them talk about their health issues, their struggles with body image, the overwhelming dissatisfaction of who they are, and obviously the world around them that is creating a little bit more pressure um, these days maybe than in my uh, years growing up. But I listen. We listen. And though my services are for all people, all walks of life, and all age ranges, nowhere is this partnership actually more valuable to me than in my teenage or young adult clients. And that said, I point young people in the direction of their parents. I'm not usurping authority over parents. I actually am just trying to be a member on that care team and, um, you know, kind of an outsider, perhaps someone with a different point of view, seeing all sides of the issues that present in hopes of offering a fresh perspective and maybe seeing things that they can um, use to open their eyes on either side, whether it's the parents or the kids. Um, I do a lot of mediator, negotiator um, type um, work as well. So uh, my goal is always to be on the side of health or the side of well-being and balance for all involved and to help 
people to open up their hearts and their minds to the possibilities. So I've written curriculum years ago, I think it was 1999 when it debuted for John Maxwell originally called um, Mentoring Women, A One-Year Journey. And then later I wrote Mentoring Young Women. Um, On my own, I got the rights back after um, Enjoy and the conference leadership conferences were done with my material, Mentoring Women. I got the rights back and I redesigned it. And now it's actually in digital form so people can use it on their own if they want to take a one-year journey or with a group that are uh, interested in taking that one-year journey. And same with Mentoring Young Women, Taking Ownership of Your Life and Your Life Choices is the tagline of that one. And that's for mothers and daughters to do together. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the coming weeks on the podcast. But it was also followed up by a conference for teenage girls designed to address the struggles of teenagers. um, And it was called You Go Girl. So I've done a lot in the area of women's health, as well as um, doing some just Uh, co-ed work, obviously. And in many years of youth ministry, I think prepared me for my work with young people. But it allowed me to mentor many uh, wonderful men and women and young girls and boys, um, now parents who sometimes call on me with their own preteens and teens. Wow. Yes. Okay. I am that old. So I, I wrote a, a book called The Process of Becoming, and it's based on an amazing phenomenon that we're all pretty um, well-versed in, the cycle of life of a butterfly. And it's got three main characters. They're all three my grandchildren, Regan, Isabella, and Caleb, who you met in a recent podcast. So I've done a lot of these kind of things basically to give some tools, again, to parents for the most part, and just help individuals as well as young people to reach their best self. So the other thing that I designed was called Nutrition Essentials for Teens. That was early on, and it was inspired by my grandson as a college freshman at the time when I wrote the program. But Caleb has heard a lot about nutrition from his nana over the years, and he took a lot of it to heart during the later years of his high school years and began to ask more for my help as he got older. In fact, we used to meet in my office and we'd discuss his desires and goals for his future that he wanted for himself. And I decided, um, If that wise and wonderful 16-year-old at the time was concerned about his health and his basketball performance, maybe other teens were as well. So I put together a program for that, and the proof was in the attendance in this case. I don't know if they came because they wanted to or they came because their parents influenced them, but I do believe that they left with more interest than they came with, and that was a win, so I appreciated their attendance and their attention and their questions, all of it was really wonderful. And that kind of came as a result of a need. So I've been all about finding the need and trying to meet that need. And that's where solutions come from all the time. So just like Business Radio X, you know, making the voice of a business owner, uh, giving that voice to a business owner. So the other thing I I did with Nutrition Essentials recently, I turned it into what I call the clean machine, and uh, it addresses the powerful basic um, issues of nutrition and how we fuel our body. I do it in two hours if it's in person and 90 minutes if it's virtual. And uh, we focus on the right fuel for weight management, brain power, um, prevention of sickness and disease, as well as optimal strength and performance for sports endeavors. And we break it down into eight essentials, and it's a very fast-paced workshop full of hands-on fun if it's in person, as well as role-playing and just some different things that help kids to, um, or young people, to make that practical information um, applicable to them and jumpstart their health journey in whatever way, shape, or form they see fit. So students learn how to how the right fats fuel brain cell performance, how the right proteins fuel muscle strength, how the right carbs fuel energy and endurance, 
and how the right emotional mental fuel will help their character and their core values work together for their overall well-being. That's what I'm all about is their well-being. So every choice at every age has the potential to make us weak, sick, and dumb, or strong, healthy, and smart. So yesterday I was with some parents and teachers and kids um, about an hour and a half from here and um, with PowerPoints and notes and questions and answers with the coach. So it was a fun activity and a great experience. And then another thing that is available to you is I shape me one choice at a time. I have one that's specific to teens and one that's specific for adults, both men and women. And it's a great starting point, I think, especially for young people, the why, the what, and the how to build the life that you really want to live, focused on the trans-theoretical model of change, stages of change, the stage of um, change process, and increasing your own intrinsic motivation, that internal drive. Like I said, that music does for me. It just lifts me up and makes me feel like I can do this. I can do something. I can make a change. I can adjust this. My behavior can be different than it has been in the past. And I just focus on what I'm doing now and what I'm doing next. And then the individual coaching program. And that's where the topics, um, they are topic-driven at first uh, through an eight-session phase one clean concepts program, combining the information and inspiration that I keep telling you about, making it personally applicable and turning it into a private setting for those struggling with um, not feeling your very best emotionally or physically or mentally. And it's designed specifically for those individuals who are interested in addressing those challenges that I keep talking about, but addressing them holistically. It helps them to feel more uh, supported and more connected and less alone and gives you the answers to the right questions. And that's my goal during our one-on-one -on -one and our whole team is ready to uh, help you with that. And then many people are aware, obviously, that foods do affect their physical health and wellness, but most don't take it seriously and maybe not as seriously as they could or should because they feel overwhelmed by the challenge and just don't know what to do or how to do it, even if they knew what to do. And they maybe do nothing because they just aren't sure. And so they just try to cope or try to deal with things because they think maybe this is as good as it gets. But I say, no, it's not. And I, I hope that you're hearing that and it's increasing your own intrinsic motivation in what you can do or what we can do together. We all know the pressure that we feel from those outside or even inside to be something or look a certain way. And as we age, maybe it's a little less important, but still important. And we can't just tell a young person, oh, it'll get better, or one day it won't matter to you, because it matters, and it matters now. So don't tell them it doesn't matter. And uh, it's basically, if you tell them it doesn't matter, it's kind of another way of telling them that what they're feeling does not matter. And that's not a healthy thing for anyone of us to feel. So I address the cares of women and men, clients, um, all ages. Sometimes tears well up in their eyes and self-image issues can creep up very quickly. And um, they keep us bound up and on diets that only make problems worse or meds that mask the underlying conditions and behavior challenges that may be holding us back. So I teach freedom. I say, love the foods that love you back. I love food and I hate diets. So um, that's why I designed a program called the Not A Diet Diet, and it works. It focuses on health and wellness, not weight or calorie counting. We focus on real food that taste buds like as much as the body systems do. So when I uh, concentrate or we have our concentration on the efforts of the body's systems and we can bring health to all those body systems, we make progress in all the areas of wellness, correcting body systems so that they work um, the way they're created to work, and the whole body will reward you by working together. It's magnificent. 
So that's just the physical side of things. So remember that, um, that I said we're more than what we see in the mirror or what we feel in our body. But so many people are still unaware of how foods affect our mental health and our intellectual abilities um, and, of course, our emotional strength. So who needs our services? everyone. If you're listening, you need what we certified health and wellness coaches offer. We work from the inside out. That's our goal is to make you strong from the inside out where you don't have to depend on us. And um, you've got the skills that you need. So we help you to develop those strong, healthy and smart core values, lifestyle choices, exercise routines, attitudes that will take you for the long haul and nutrition to fuel fuel you from the inside out and you'll live long and strong just like me. Remember, that's my goal is to live long and strong with passion and purpose, die of old age and help you to do the same. So I'm all about that. The clean acronym resonates with all age groups and it's usually hard to forget. You've got five fingers. Think about it that way, getting a grip on things. And um, the clean acronym works specifically for those precious young people because it gives them a picture of what being truly well is all about. They get it once they hear it, and they we begin to build rapport. They respond positively to the message and the partnership that we offer them. I love them, and they feel it. They know that I am the coach in their corner and that I have what it takes to help them move forward, and I move forward with them. I move forward with you. I'm going to end this segment with a great story, one of my favorite stories, and it is about Rich Strike, who um, won the 148th running of the Kentucky Derby just last year on May 7th, 2022. Now, here are the facts um, going into the race. Rich Strike was the longest long shot in the field, overcoming an 80 to 1 odds pulling off one of the most shocking upsets in history of the the race. He drew into the race just one day before the race. The field was limited to only 20 horses, as you know, with only four, and they're called also eligibles, and um, in case of a withdrawal from the field. And he was entered just 30 seconds before the deadline. And only after ethereal real read, I'm sorry, I have a hard time saying ethereal, (laughs) ethereal road was scratched by his trainer. So 30 seconds from the deadline and Rich Strike's trainer, his groomer, the jockey and the owner, the comments after the race were just amazing. And I hope you get a chance to uh, look into this a little bit more. But he's the owner said, we never enter a race we don't think we can win. It's like having a football team and winning the Super Bowl, probably bigger because you only have one player. I love that. And he, he says, I fell down in the paddock when he hit the wire. I just about passed out. I was so happy. We were not supposed to be here. Uh, people said they wouldn't make it. They weren't supposed to be there. And um, he said, I knew I had a horse that loved the track. And that's what made the difference. He'd been training so good all year. So those were some of the facts going into the race, that he was the longest long shot, 80 to 1 odds, one of the most shocking upsets in race history. One day before the race, he was entered just 30 seconds before the deadline and only after a horse was scratched by his trainer that wasn't going to be running. So the other facts in this case were Rich Strike himself. He didn't know he was a long shot. He didn't know that. He didn't know he wasn't supposed to be there or people said he wasn't supposed to be there. He was a racehorse. That's all he knew. He didn't know that he only cost 13,000 when he was racing against million dollar horses. And he didn't know the odds uh, or the statistics that were against him. He didn't know he wasn't even going to race until another horse was scratched. He was prepared to race. He had practiced. Um, He had run like the wind, you know, preparing for that race. He'd been trained and loved and believed in. 
No one told him he couldn't do it. I love a great story of an underdog, but this story has special meaning, I think. And I'm definitely putting some money on some horses this year um, in my own mind. I love watching um, the race, um, but I've never bet on a horse, but those people who bet on Rich Strike probably struck it rich a little bit too. Um, but he was prepared and he put in the time. And um, he had a winning team who was loving him and caring for him and preparing him for the run. And he showed up ready to do his job when the opportunity presented itself. And it did. And he did. So now that chestnut colt will go down in history, earning the winner's share of 1.6, no, 1.86 million for the owner. And it's all because he believed he could. So in our closing thoughts today, my final word to you is out with the old and in with the new. Today and every day, out with the old, the old mindset, the old behavior, the outcomes that are less than best, and in with the new. We can help. Invite us to your church to present your health his way, raising kids, uh, raising healthy kids, or the clean teen programs. Uh, invite us to your workplace or your work well podcast. You've got some different, uh, I'm sorry, your um, wellness workshops or things that I do for your companies. And I can present I Shape Me, One Choice at a Time, or Work Well Balance, or Stress Less, Live More. Um, invite us into your family so that we can present Healthy Me, Healthy Family, Healthy World. Invite us to speak for your conference or your retreat or your small group or your wellness weekends. Buy my book, The Process of Becoming. Read it to your kids and do the worksheets that are in the back of the book so you and your kids can become your best self and uh, all the while enjoying the step you're on. Invest in yourself and your own journey with our individual coaching programs, clean concepts, and other programs. Schedule your vital um, healthy living assessment and your agenda mapping session with us. We do them virtually, and it's what we're about. And you can find out what we're all about and why I'm so passionate about all the good that we can do together. Just like Rich Strike, who's owner, trainer, groomer, and jockey, you can enter the race at any time. You can run like you believe you can win, no matter what the odds or who may call you a long shot. But if you're trained, prepared, and have a heart to run, when the gate opens, you too can go down in history because you believe that you can. Awesome. Well, you've been listening to Work Well with Stephanie Wolf, brought to you by the Whole Food Health Coach, where we make your goals our goals, and you're never alone on your wellness journey. For information about our corporate wellness programs, virtual classes, or our individual coaching programs, you know it, go to wholefoodhealthcoach.com. Our coaching is available virtually anywhere in the country. I'm Stephanie Wolf, wishing you well personally and professionally. See you next week live or on your favorite podcast channel. Until then, choose life. <laughs>